My name is Tay Keith. I'm from uh, Memphis, Tennessee. My first musical experience was like, uh, when I was like in sixth grade, I had like a little piano. And I used to play like Lil Wayne Lollipop, like the little doo 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 I was just playing this shit on that. Then I, uh, I just kind of got into music from then on. My first equipment that I bought was a laptop I had bought from Easy Pond right there on summer. I had spent like $40 on it, a little used laptop. It just made me like a way to make money. You know, I just wanted to like, kind of just find a way to make extra money. So I get my inspiration from niggas like Drama Boy, maybe Trey Boy, DJ Squeaky, you know, like the the Memphis producers who had a like, you know, they own way type of shit. They inspired me. The school really just like, you know, it's always like, you gotta have plan A and a plan B. And like music, I was gonna be the plan A cause that's what, what got me where I'm at. But like, like just say like, Five years I fall off or some shit, or like I fall out next year or something. At least I'm gonna have my degree to fall back on, you know, give me a little job or something. Hell no, nah, don't go to school for producing, cause I ain't go to school for producing. Like everything I learned, I learned on my own. You know, it's like, what you gonna pay for something that you can do, you know what I'm saying, free? Like, if you got it, you got it. If you don't, you just, you know what I'm saying? It's just like saying, I'm, right, I'm gonna go to school, pay to be a rapper. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go learn how to rap in school. Nah, you just, that shit just gotta come natural. I worked at Hippie Sports and I worked at Ball Gun. I worked at Hippie Sports for like two months. Then I worked at Ball Gun for like five days. They ain't let me off for the 4th of July. I quit. Walked out that motherfucker. The experience I get from it, you know, like, and at first it was all about the music, then it was about the money, then it's like now it's about the experience of like being able to travel and go to Cali and, you know what I'm saying, like, do shit like this. The interview kind of like make me want to stay more passionate and consistent about making music. It would give me a drive for it now, like just to experience shit. I ain't never experienced. But I, I just realized like how short life is, you know what I'm saying? Like I look back like, damn, I'm 21 now. You know, when I started making music, I was like 12. So I just looked like, damn, time go by so quick. Like, I just want to experience a lot of shit, a lot of more shit. In the clap. Then I had to add like a little more kick, a little more kick to the top. What made me take producing more serious, would take it serious in general, like when I got my first YouTube chick, it was like $115, some shit like that. Then I'm like, damn, I can make some money off of, you know, so I just started going at it full force, you know, like putting shit on YouTube, like I was doing like Yo Gotti type beat, like Lil Wayne type beat, Future type beat, shit like that. Like, what it do, it just drive people to your page, you know, like your YouTube channel, like, get them views up. And I was just doing this shit, and it just drove a lot of people to start buying beats from me too, so I was getting a YouTube check, then I was selling beats, $50 beats, $75 beats and shit. My family definitely, like, I, I can tell, like, they, they actually care and, you know, want to be a more part of what I'm doing, so. What I feel separate me from other producers is my hi-hats and my 808s. The way everybody got that, pretty much that same little sound, my shit different, like, my shit bounce. I got that bounce, that, that shit, like, that ride, and you know, I put I put it on a, on a way bigger scale now than just like Memphis. In the motherfucking road, fuck. Niggas talking down, I don't know. Yeah. It was my boy, uh, Young Nick. It was a, uh, it was a, uh, uh, it was a Hot 107 competition. You know, when uh, we had did a song, and he put that junk, he had submitted that junk through the competition. It was like little rounds and shit. And that night I had heard it on the radio. I was in the house type shit. We ain't had no cable then, so I just listened to the radio and shit. So. That shit just like changed me from that point on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to be like, probably like, like 14, 15, some shit like that. And a lot of people played a part in helping me get where I'm at, you know, for like my mama, then like my daddy, like on their vice side and shit. And then like my brothers and my cousins, then like, of course, like Blockboy and shit like that. Like, 
everybody else who I just had like personal relationships with just helped me form into that shit. Man, shit, I knew Block Boy like what? About six years. Shit, when I moved with my daddy, he stayed around the corner. So we were just kicking in the hood for anything. Like we was just, we was niggas. Then, you know, the movies and shit just came. Like it wasn't that he was taking serious, it wasn't that I was just taking too serious. So we just was trying shit out. Like we ended up making some consistent music that folk were fucking with the shoot. That that whole situation came about like on some random ass shit. Like we was finishing up his tape. And uh, you know, I think that was probably one of the last songs we did on that joint, to be exact. Like he just was some random shit we just threw on that joint. Then he did the dance. When he did the dance video to it, it kinda like caught folks attention, like damn though we can do.